The question is, if I were elected and Congress were to pass the DREAM Act, would I veto it? And the answer is yes. The answer is self-deportation, which is people decide that they can do better by going home because they can't find work here because they don't have legal documentation to allow them to work here. I think you see a model here in Arizona. Now, for months in this program, we talked about the importance of the Latino vote in November, and we profiled the hole with Latino voters that Mitt Romney may have dug himself in here in that primary fight where he really had to tack right. Now, you just heard the man himself speaking out during those primaries opposing three critical issues for Latinos, the DREAM Act, the deportation of undocumented immigrants, and that Arizona immigration law. The Obama campaign, as you'd expect, they sense weakness for Romney. Mi familia es una familia de, de mujeres fuertes. Mi mamá siempre me dijo, el regalo más grande que tú me vas a poder hacer es darme un diploma que yo pueda colgar en la sala. The campaign has launched this ad along with a campaign focus group, Latinos for Obama, playing up the president's pro-Latino positions and hammering Mitt Romney for his views. Now, Romney already has got a huge gap in the Latino voters. And I want to remind you, off the top, I said this is pretty much a dead heat. But when you look at the female vote and the Latino vote, which we're going to talk about this segment, both gaps are breaking for Obama in a big way. Take a look at this latest Pew Research poll. Romney trailing Obama by 40 points among Latino voters. It's a Democratic group, but never breaking this big in recent memory. It's a larger gap than Obama had over Obama, over John McCain, excuse me, just three and a half years ago. And you check the electoral maps and the math, that difference may be all it takes to keep Romney from winning the White House come November. And joining us tonight to talk about this issue and much more, Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author, Brad Gersman, political consultant, and Andrew, our senior political correspondent. But before we all chime in here, Andrew, you've done a little bit of the math here on this map here. Break it down for us. It all has to do with electoral votes and that big board map of the U.S. that you see on election night. Win the right combination of states, you win the election. Here are the states that most experts expect President Obama to win or where most polls have him ahead. Add them all up, he's sitting at 247 electoral votes, 23 votes shy of victory. Now add Nevada, Colorado, and Arizona to that mix. Those are all states with Hispanic populations of 20% or more, and all have had the president either ahead or tied in polling. Add them to the mix, and the president's total jumps to 273 electoral votes. That means he wins re-election without winning Florida, Ohio, or Virginia. And if the president falls short in any of those states, there are still all these other electoral votes up for uh, grabs, including Florida, and it's 23 percent Latino vote. If the president wins all those states, it's up to 369 electoral votes. And at that point, Rich, we're talking about an Obama landslide. All right. Well, let's uh, talk to somebody much closer than uh, the four of us to this. Uh, discussing the Latino vote, Brent Wilkes now, the National Executive Director for the League of United Latin American Citizens. He's joining us live from D.C. Brent, thanks for a few minutes. Thanks for having me on. Is it um, really that the GOP screwed this thing up so bad? That's why we got a swing as big as it seems right now. And we talked about the big issues, the DREAM Act, deportation, Arizona, uh, keep hammering on the wall and maybe demonization of illegals. Have they been their own worst enemy in this polling or is it the president? No, it's absolutely been the Republicans who've been their own worst enemy. They've been so vicious on this issue. Uh, it's not just the, the terrible positions they've taken, but just the way they've talked about it, even uh, joking around, or I don't know if it was a joke, but talking about possibly electrifying people to death by touching a fence. This was heard in the primaries, and, and, and all the, the rhetoric has been so bad that um, they've dug themselves a huge hole. I've never seen a gap that large um, in you know, the last 30 years. There's never been a Republican starting from this far back with a Latino vote. So they, they've gotten themselves in a lot of trouble. Obama, you know, he's, he's done well on certain issues, but on the issue of immigration, he's not been able to deliver um, a positive immigration bill during his first uh, four years. So um, he, he did leave himself open, and yet, and yet the Republicans, instead of taking advantage of that, have actually dug themselves in really deep. They seen the Republicans, though, to at least acknowledge they got a problem. Marco Rubio um, from Florida, obviously, he laid out a revised uh, DREAM Act proposal today uh, doesn't go as far, obviously, as the, the DREAM Act that most people know right now, but it's not as punitive, let's say, as some of the stuff we heard in the Republican uh, primary debates here on the presidential front. Is that enough? Uh, I mean, I've even heard that, obviously, the, you got Romney considering uh, some Latino candidates as a running mate, which would be historic, I guess. Can they do anything right now to reappeal to the Latino vote here to mitigate the damage? 
Well, historically, they've not been able to do that. When Pete Wilson went really negative in California, the party never was able to recover with Latino voters, and that state has been blue pretty much ever since. Um, it's unlikely that they can repair the damage. Now, you know, perhaps with a very strong effort to, to reverse the damage that they've done, if, if, if there is a DREAM Act that's actually passed and it's done so with, with Romney's backing and Rubio's uh, stamp of approval, and you've got um, an effort to put a Latino running mate uh, paired up with, with, with Romney, and you've got, you know, I think a, a number of other critical steps they're going to have to take. And, and you do all those things, and you somehow convince uh, the Latino voters that what you said before, you didn't really mean it. Well, if you do all that, then perhaps, perhaps they've got a shot. But I think, I think they've really hurt themselves. It's surprising that um, they, they rolled the dice in such a way to, to go so far to the extreme where they, they put themselves in the hole for the, for the, for the general election in a way that I, I haven't seen a, a Republican candidate do before. You remember, you remember Bush came in, and he yeah. had uh, played up, even in the primary, his, his Latino connections, and yet um, you haven't seen any from any of that at all. And to be fair Romney, to Bush, uh, at least in his second, to, uh, to be fair to Bush, at least in his second term, he tried immigration reform, um, but uh, his own mm. party, and to be fair, even some Democrats didn't help him out. Let me take this another way. Uh, listen, informally, mm. Brent, almost anybody I talk to about the Dream Act, when they read a little bit about it, regardless of their politics, they say, you know what? If the kid's going to keep their nose clean if they're going to learn the language, if they're going to find a job here, if they're going to be contributing members, put them on a pathway to citizenship. I'm with that. Why doesn't the Obama administration, instead of pointing um, to the GOP and say, see how bad these guys are, why don't they wrap their arms around that a little bit more than they have here? I mean, are you a little disappointed in the White House that they haven't done more other than saying we're not as bad as the other guys? Well, there certainly is some disappointment, but I have to be honest. I mean, the, the Obama administration has tried to pass the DREAM Act. They did make a try in the Senate. Uh, Senator Durbin was point on that. Senator Reid was pushing it. Uh, the administration weighed in in its favor. And they could not even pick up the Republicans that they had uh, in the last try, in which they, they actually had a good number of Republicans um, and the last time they tried to push this with McCain's backing. Uh, this time they couldn't even get McCain. I mean, the original, original author of the bill. So it was really disheartening to see the DREAM Act fail when we could have had it passed if we just had the Republicans, held the yeah. Republicans that we had. I would have liked to see it, a little before, bit so. more, a little bit more political capital from the White House, a little bit more they could have put, but that for another time. Brent, finally, I hear some arguments sure. that with voter ID uh, laws being pushed here to make it more difficult um, or at least to frighten more people from going to the polls, plus some antipathy or, or indifference from the electorate, they say, hey, they might tell you in polls that the Republicans, um, they're really going to be down on Romney, but they're really not going to turn out in November on Election Day and vote in big numbers. What are you hearing? Well, I actually think there is a lot of engagement in the community, but there is a significant challenge. Uh, due to the foreclosure crisis, a lot of Latinos have moved. They've been wiped out of the rolls, you know, with, with these purges that they do. And the, this voter suppression uh, effort is real and it's going to impact the vote. It definitely is. So the question is whether the advocates, the LULACs and the other organizations that we partner with are able to combat that, come back and register those voters again and make sure that they turn out for the polls. We're working hard to do that, but I, I, I got to tell you, we need some help. It's not going to be easy this time because they really put up a massive effort to stop us. Hey, Brent, I appreciate a few minutes. Great job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Uh, let me bring in uh, the table here on this, guys. And Brad, um, as a consultant here, you're figuring out constituencies all the time. Between women and Latinos, is there a demo that more than any other is going to swing this one way or the other in November? Yeah, well, I think, I think the women uh, are probably one that will, will, will swing this thing. But I think there's also something else we need to think about. We talk about the hole that's been dug during the GOP primary. Uh, what, what we don't understand also is, but is, the, uh, is, the, is the fact that jobs will become a main focus, and they, they're trying to make it a main focus. And when it comes to Latinos, when it comes to women, uh, the argument can be made that under Obama that they've done the worst when it comes to jobs. They're the ones who are most unemployed mm -hmm. and the ones who need the most help. And that's where the Republicans will come in and, and lend a helping hand in generating excitement in the economy and the growth that would be expected. But it's, it, that sounds a little bit like like a bad husband coming around on the anniversary with one, you know, with a bouquet of flowers. See, I loves you, honey. It, it, I mean, all the history stacks up 
against the Republicans in all of the legislation that they put forward so far. The challenge from the Democrats is going to be to make sure that voters know about it. Because as much as we may say that there's a war on women, it's really only being picked up by the people who follow politics day in, day out. There's a large percentage I mean, of population. I was going through, Andrew, some of the stuff that's happening state by state here. Um, it's crazy stuff, Dominic. I mean, we don't hear about it maybe in the Northeast <clears> as much, <throat> but some of the stuff, and I'm not just talking in Timbuktu, I'm talking in Maryland, I'm talking, I mean, North Dakota. You go state by state, it's some crazy stuff. But I think the president, it's a little bit of a tougher sell than maybe we say it. Because if all of a sudden he keeps saying, I feel your pain at the bottom here, right? I feel, I understand they're cutting aid for dependent children uh, and uh, we're cutting social safety nets. This is hurting you guys. And I'm with you Latinos, right? I'm gonna try and make sure that you have a place at the table here. In some ways, is he almost playing into the other side's hand to say, see, this is the, the great uh, you know, guy who's trying to do wealth distribution here and he's trying to penalize the job creators. He doesn't get how to put jobs back on the uh, American home. Hey, Excellent point, because the more the president yeah, makes that show, case, Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> the more the president makes that case, he can fall into that trap. But you started out by asking the question about demographics, and I'm going to make up one here. In terms of you talked about the Latino vote, the gender gap, here's one I'm going to make up for you. Voter apathy. If Obama does not turn out his base, you have to remember the record numbers of young people, of people of color, of progressives that voted for him. If he doesn't match that, and that's why polling now shows but, Tom, this record races neck and neck. Can you get excited and have major turnout this for all you guys by saying, you better be afraid of the other guy. If the other guy gets in here, just see who yes, you're going to put on absolutely. the hype. Yes, but don't absolutely. you need turnout to no. be enthused about the, the <laughs> no. main candidate? Here's the thing is, Obama, and to the Republicans' credit, by stopping every single proposal that he's had for the last year and a half, has done nothing. Okay, And since that's the case, he can't point to anything that he's done that he can say, look, if I'm president... I could do this, I've done this for you, and I can even go further. Because the problem is, is he's put together proposals, they've gone nowhere, but nobody knows but, that, but, nobody but, but, digs but, but, into but, that. But, but let me tell you one that he can deliver to the Latino community. He can say, look at your Supreme Court. Those of you minorities that don't like Clarence mayor. Thomas, yeah. look at the woman, the first Latino that looks just like you, that I put on the Supreme Court. That's, that goes that's a, a long way. That's a very good point, and that will go, and that is something that, if you're a progressive, you're a liberal, you're a Democrat, I'll tell you something, even if you're or an independent and you're socially liberal, this next presidency will change that dynamic on the Supreme Court at more than we've ever seen. And this is something that, again, there's so many unaffiliated. Yeah. They're gonna, if they're going to move mm -hmm. to the right on this case, we're in trouble. Well, we're going to talk more about it in the next segment here as we're going to break down um, as we look at some new numbers here. Whatever we're saying, whether about the Latino vote, and the gender gap is, as Dominic said, and they're breaking big for Obama. As we sit here tonight, this Wednesday evening, Obama and Romney are in a dead heat. But when it comes to likability, well, not so much. The question is, does it really matter who you like? Well, we're going to get into that a lot more as we talk about real politics after this.